This morning, illegal guns in the hands of criminals. WJZ investigated an epidemic across our city. Mary Bubola traces one gun's deadly trail, asking what can be done to get these dangerous weapons off our streets. May 29th, 2010, just after midnight, a bad guy with an illegal gun opens fire, killing a man in Northeast Baltimore. The first shooting rings out here in the 2600 block of East Monument Street. And while detectives are on scene gathering evidence, another shooting. 45 minutes later and just blocks away, the same guy shoots and kills another man. And when they got to this crime scene on North Rose Street, it was the same gun. One gun, two families whose lives have been destroyed or at least changed in a matter of minutes. This illegal gun, just one of thousands taken off city streets since then. But how did that gun, a Rossi 38 caliber revolver like this, end up here? U.S. Attorney Rod Rosenstein. A significant proportion of the guns that are recovered in Baltimore City were stolen at some point. That's exactly how this gun ends up in Baltimore, stolen from a gun shop in North Carolina. In 2007, it lands in a Glen Burnie gun shop here in Maryland. A woman in Pasadena buys it, but it's stolen again. Three years later, city police tell WJZ it hits Baltimore streets in the hands of a criminal who's ready to kill. It was never reported stolen. It was never reported missing. It just miraculously appeared in Baltimore as it took two young lives. It is incredible. One gun can have such a huge impact on several people. It is breathtaking. WJZ investigates just how many illegal guns are out there. While that number is hard to measure, city police tell us they've already gotten nearly 3,500 illegal guns off the street since last year. Many line the walls of the city police crime lab run by Steve O'Dell. What does it really mean for the people living in Baltimore who feel like their streets aren't safe when you link one individual illegal gun to many crimes. It leads to case closures. It leads to solving a crime, to linking of crime. It leads to uh, getting bad guys off the street. Um, it leads to substantial criminal charges. That's exactly what happens in these two killings. That gun was finally taken off the streets. Taken off the street, two bodies too late. But thousands and thousands still out there. Now the feds and city cops are teaming up to crack down on gun-toting criminals. More people are carrying guns on the street. And the consequence of that is you get more random shootings, uh, more shootings that arise out of momentary, sort of spur-of-the-moment disputes, in addition to the traditional targeted killings. Do you have hope that we will reduce the number of illegal guns on the streets of Baltimore? So the message we hope to send is uh, to leave the guns at home or to be prepared to spend time in federal prison if you're caught. Mary joins us now, and Mary, it does seem like progress is being made. Yeah, a little bit. I mean, it is such an immense problem, illegal guns and violence on the streets of Baltimore, but they're definitely making uh, progress, especially with this new partnership, mm -hmm. local and federal. And the fact that if they can find these criminals who have prior convictions, they get them on this gun crime, they can lock them up in federal prison for up to 10 years, and you know, in federal criminal justice system, there's no parole and there's no probation. So it's sending an incredible mm -hmm. message to some of the people out on the streets of Baltimore. And you said in your story, you know, you see these guns, they go s across several states, and that one gun can affect so many lives. Yeah, it is devastating how one gun can leave a trail of devastation, destruction, pain for mm -hmm. one family, two families, three families, and that's one of thousands of similar scenarios when illegal guns are used to commit murder and crime. You spent a lot of time in the crime lab, so high tech. Yeah, they, we got such great access. We weren't sure what access we were gonna get. Mm -hmm. We ended up being there almost an hour or two, um, really going to all of the divisions. It does feel a bit like CSI for sure. Sure. Not as Hollywood, it's right. a little bit lower key, but the techniques they're using are really high tech, how they can use those casings, look at the markings, and really tie those guns to specific crimes. It's, it's working and it's amazing. It's really impressive. Yeah. All right, well, Mary, thank you for sharing the story with us and talking with us this morning. No problem.